guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk. And today I am going to film my April favorites. Firstly, I'm going to start off with books because that's what I do. Mudvayne by Taryn Fisher. Oh, okay, so just click on this side of the screen if you want to see my review for it. I loved this book. It had so many layers. It was so well thought out and we've had like fan discussion type things with Taryn Fisher like on Facebook and just there's so many layers to this book and it's just, oh my god it just it's so it's so good there's not just like this surface level of this is what the book is it's different levels and like a certain name means a certain thing and there are all these you know really deep illusions and it's fantastic is it too early to say that I love Pauline because the bronze horseman I'm about halfway through it but ugh, it's easily one of my top five favorite books and I haven't even gotten to the really, really, really good stuff. Oh, this book just makes me melt. And I have a couple quotes that I'm going to have for it in like my poetry favorites, which is really more of like a quotes favorites of the month for this month. But I have a couple things from that. So be sure to go over and check that out if you want to hear a little bit about it. And I'm definitely going to film a review on it, hopefully by the end of the following month. But this thing is just, it's so captivating. I've had it recommended to me quite a couple times and then I heard Taryn Fisher talking about it and you guys already know I love Mudvayne so I really I her opinion high on the totem pole of opinions okay there are a couple people that have talked to me about being hesitant to whether or not to pick it up because it's more of like historically I'm just I'm gonna stop you right there this is not like the typical historical at all this is just the circumstances in which this story is happening. Um, it's during World War II in Russia, and it's how this family is dealing with that. Like, it's before the war even. It's just this whole uh, really hard time for these people, and it's just how they are affected by it. It's like zooming in on one thing. I kind of would compare it to the movie Titanic, how, yes, that was a historical event, and so if you think, oh, the movie's gonna be so, you know, history, history, and it's just, it's not. It just, it hones in on this particular person, like these people. And it definitely is a love story, and there, it's so complicated, but it's it's really, really good and worth the read. And I know it's intimidating because it's so big, but I just went through 100 pages yesterday. So hopefully I will get this up for you guys soon. And I'll do my very, very best to give a long non-spoiler section because I've had so many questions about it. So now I'm going to talk about music. I discovered the Airborne Toxic event. Oh, and I'm obsessed. And I think my favorite CD is Hot Blood, Such Hot Blood. Yeah, that's what it's called. Oh, it's so damn good. If you just look up their YouTube channel and you just go through things, that's how I discovered which CD I decided I wanted. Oh, their music, their lyrics, their lyrics. Colleen Hoover, thank you. My obsession, my neighbors hate you because I play it very loudly. But you know what? It's so good. I feel like I've mentioned this in a video before, but they're still the favorite of this month. And I don't have a CD necessarily pinned down for this guy, Ben Rector. Unfortunate last name, but um, I really like the sound of his voice. There's this one song about dancing. I'll slip the title up right here. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head though, but that was one of my favorites of this. Oh, and I guess for like five seconds to go back to the Airborne Toxic movement, I like every song on that CD, so I can't even pin it down to one specific. Um, I got The Fifth Day, Elizabeth, all of them, all of them. And the lovely Julia Stone. I already have a lot of Julia Stone stuff on my iTunes and Angus and Julia Stone, like the I don't really know the relation, but anyways. Because I read Mudvayne, Julia Stone was mentioned in it and I really fell back in love with Julia Stone. I just, do you ever have those certain artists or CDs that you just forget about for like a year? And then you hear something that makes you think of it or that makes you want to listen to it and you just, it's like a whole new obsession. You fall in love with it all over again. That's what happened. But The Memory Machine, I think is the one I was mostly listening to, that CD. So I'm gonna go with that one. Gregory Allen Isaacov is, oh my God, one of my favorites. I don't really have a specific CD. I guess I'll throw one up here, but I've been listening to all of his stuff, all of it. It's just very, oh, it has that feel about it. I don't even know, like you can just only, make this swaying motion of hand things that means nothing to people, Hannah, only to you. If you're familiar with his music, I think you get a little bit of what I'm talking about. It's very beautiful, I guess. I'm trying to think of better words for it, but the lyrics are, again, very beautiful. Now I'm going to talk about my favorite movie of the month. It's kind of the only one I watched, but still, even if I had watched 10, this would still beat it, all of them, I promise. And that is up in the air. I am so far behind this train. It was, what, released in 2007 or 2009 or something, and it was winning all of these things and I just was not part of that bandwagon and I regret it so much. It's such a good movie. 
I just DVR'd it randomly because I saw that it was on. I'm like, hey, I want to see what the hype is about. And the hype is definitely there for a good reason. There are a couple different instances where there's just like these monologues, I guess, or even sometimes these discussions between the characters. And it's just really like, whoa. You listen to it and you're like, that just got really deep. And now I'm going to talk about Netflix, but this section is quite short this month. I just, I stuck with one thing and storms through season and a half of it in like a three day period and then I just stopped watching Netflix. It was one of those weird months. Uh, but I started watching House again. I'm obsessed with House. Hugh Laurie is as old as my father and he's still insanely attractive to me and I feel like such a weird person for saying that. It was one of those things that I watched in high school and I was obsessed with and then I fell out of for a while and then I'm like, Oh my god, they're still making seasons. I need to watch and catch up and enjoy it again. And I just, I love House. He's so blunt and just funny, but not trying to be. And he's mean, but I like that about him because I like flawed characters. And so now I'm going to talk about TV shows that I am recently obsessed with. This is something that I'm going to start including in my monthly favorites because I mentioned last month how I really liked The Red Road and that was like a current on TV thing at that time. And I'm like, you know what? I kind of need to do that for every month because I'm always watching the TV, not at the same time that it's going on, but like the DVR. I brought it down to just two that I really loved. Because I mean, you guys know that I love the following, I have a TV talk on that, and just other stuff like that, like the Vampire Diaries, things that I'm constantly watching, but things that have like recently became on air that I'm just like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Firstly, Game of Thrones. Game of fucking Thrones, Game of fucking Thrones. I love this series. I have not read the books, please don't spoil me. Please don't spoil me. But I, it's three, four episodes in at this point. Big shock early in the season. I did not expect it. I'm not going to spoil if you are behind, but if you're behind, why? All I'm saying is they're not making us wait until the finale to get a big shocking moment. Drama. Also a show that just started up, it's actually the first season, and that is Salem. Oh, mm, I don't do contorted bodies. And there's this one girl who's like possessed and she's like, and then like ripped off her own finger and like pointing. And it's just, it's a really interesting take on Salem. And I've always kind of had this weird fascination with Salem. It's not, you know, these girls and her are pretending to say that, oh, you're a witch, you're a witch, just for you know, like social reasons. But this is to say, what if there there is something paranormal and supernatural going on? And it really explores that. And this is honestly creepy. It's creepy. It's like where American Horror Story should have gone, but didn't. Even though I still really did like the last season, it just wasn't scary. It was more funny. You know what? I lied when I said that there was only one movie that I really liked this month. I just saw this the other day with my brother who has watched it like two or three times in his high school because they're just like, I don't want to teach you today. Let's watch Frozen. So I finally watched it, you guys. And oh, it's one of my favorites. My brother was saying, you're, it's, you're gonna like it more than Beauty and the Beast, and Beauty and the Beast is one of my all-time favorites. And I'm just like, more than Sleeping Beauty? He's like, yeah, and I'm like, oh. And I watched it and it was so funny. I love this movie and I wanna watch it again. Spin is adorable and Olaf is adorable and Kristoff was sweet and Hans, Hans. And it had a really good message to it. It wasn't, oh, I don't wanna spoil, but I'm gonna be kind of vague with this. It's not, oh, true love saves all. It's just like, you know, family love. There's just more than that one kind. Cause I think Disney and any fairy tale type of whatever tends to just say, oh, true love's first kiss or some nonsense like that. But anyway, this had like an emphasis on family, which I thought was a really good message. And so now I'm going to talk about my favorite nail polish of the month. This is my last favorite for the month. Um, and it is the Essie Nail Polish. Oh my God. It's model writing and it's light blue on white. Um, find me an oasis. I don't know if I wore this in any videos, but it comes off as a very, very um, pale bluish color, mostly very pale, like pastel-y kind of. Horrible descriptions of colors, very bad. But I've been wearing it a lot because I've been attempting to be all springy and less black nail polish, hence the pink, because I'm trying. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this, and be sure to check out down there in the description my poetry favorites for this month as well. Like I said before, I'll have a couple from the Bronze Horseman in there, which will not spoil you, I promise. I picked them specifically, and I will take out names if necessary, but you should check that out because I have quite a couple that are just like really whoa, but they're more quotes, less poetry this month. I think I only have like really two poems, and they're like two lines. But I will see you guys later next time on Bookworm Stock. Bye.